Hello everyone, this is Dr. Queen Aditya, Senior Consultant Gynecologist of Pepilio Clinic, Kolkata. Today we are talking about PCOS that is Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. This is a name I am sure everyone has heard in today's day because it is a common household name. Now what is Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome? In the, this is a hormonal disbalance which affects women of the reproductive age group that is starting from the menarche or from the teens up till the age of menopause. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms of this, of this disease is, are usually menstrual disturbances. There can be irregular or delayed cycles and because, and because it is due to a hormonal imbalance, it also causes problems conceiving or that is having a pregnancy. So these are all related to ovulation or formation of the egg by the ovary. So this is the main symptom that we get. Because of the hormonal imbalance, there are more male hormones or androgens as well as more insulin. So these hormones when they are in, at a higher level, they also cause problems and symptoms. What are those symptoms? Commonly the symptoms are uh, hair growth on the face and other parts of the body in women where they are not supposed to be a lot of acne or pimples on the face. So these are the major uh, symptoms of high androgen levels that is high male hormone levels. Then the other symptoms are that women suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome can have diabetes either now or later in life. Later in life they are prone to get heart diseases high blood cholesterol and even a lot of women who have very disturbed or irregular or delayed cycles later in life they, they are also prone to suffer from ca cancer of the uterus which is also known as endometrial carcinoma. So this is a condition which can affect 10% they ideally they say that 10% of women can be affected by it but in our clinical practice we see that it is as high as 20% and it can present in any age group. Another very important feature of polycystic ovarian syndrome is obesity. Obesity means high weight, heavy weight that is a woman who have a high BMI, body mass index. Now 30 20 to 30% of women who are suffering from PCOS do not have a high BMI or, or are not obese but 70 to 80% of women are. So obesity is also highly associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the the thing is that during the reproductive years, we have irregular menstru uh, menstrual cycles, we can have problems in conceiving, then there can be uh, uh, effects of high androgen hormones which are excessive facial and uh, hair and hair in other parts of the body as well as pimples. So these I have already mentioned. Then later in life there can be consequences, they are called the metabolic syndrome and uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart diseases, high cholesterol and uh, these, uh, these things can be associated and as well as because of the high levels of estrogen that usually occur in this condition later in life there can be cancer of the uterus. So these are the things we should be, uh, we should be on the lookout for and how can we manage polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is something that we have to live with. It has no cure. Polycystic cystic ovaries have no cure but the thing is it can be under control like you must have heard that people who are having high blood pressure or diabetes have to keep it under control. Similarly, if we keep it under control then all is well and the most the most important thing the first and foremost is lifestyle modification that is controlling the weight and performing proper exercise preferably under guidance. Along with this there can be medication which is tailor made according to your needs. Some women who have high insulin levels are given insulin sensitizing agents like metformin as for example. Some women who have grossly irregular cycles are given oral contraceptive pills to control the cycle. Some women who have very high androgen levels and a lot of pimples and facial hair growth can be given uh, anti-androgen uh, uh, substances. So these are medications which are used as a supportive uh, therapy and when we want to conceive after marriage and pregnancy is not happening then ovulation induction drugs are given. So all these things are done but the cornerstone or the key point is that it is lifestyle modification again by controlling the, the diet uh, control as well as exercise. The, this is the cornerstone of, of management of polycystic ovarian syndrome and one thing we have to remember is that this condition has no cure. 
So we have to live with it, we have to control it and we have to battle over it and win. So that is what we have to do. We are talking about cervical cancer. What is cervix? It is the mouth of the uterus through which childbirth happens. Now this part is prone to cancer and it is the second largest cause of, uh, of cancers in women next to breast cancer. Now there are two important factors that, uh, that we should discuss while talking about cervical cancer that is it can be prevented to as much as 90% by a vaccine that is available nowadays that is called HPV vaccine. So we can take this vaccine between 9 and 45 years of age, there are 3 doses and it offers around 90% prote protection from this uh, disease, from this dreadly uh, uh, disease. And another thing is that there is a screening program for this that we can avail of after 21 years of age. Any woman between 21 and 65 can avail of this uh, screening which is called pap smear which is taken usually every 3 years if it comes normal. And this is to detect any precancer because this disease is such that from normal to cancer there is a total precancerous phase which covers quite a few years, many years. If we do the pap smear regularly, we can detect the precancerous stage which is not deadly and it can be treated. That particular disease can be treated without actually going into cancer. And since this is available, I think all of us should avail of it.